Hello, peeps and creeps, and welcome to the Freight Club. I'm Gav, he's Danny. Hello. We are the Freight Club and I, and this is a brand new episode of Monday Night Frights. On tonight's episode, we're talking about Ty West's creepy House of the Devil. House of the Devil, House of Beelzebub, House of Lucifer, Lucy's House. See it. It's freezing out here. Okay. Where the hell did you come from? Did you just hide? Are you, are you not the babysitter? No, I'm not the babysitter. My friend. And we're back with episode 5.10 of Monday Night Frights. Yay. Guess who's back? Danny's back. It's me. I have returned and I would like to straight up say that I did not make any comments about Jada Pinkett Smith. Please do not hurt me, no, Mr. Was, Smith. It was just, it was lost in translation, wasn't of it, course, Danny? Yeah, exactly. I made no comments about Jada Pinkett Smith. So Good. please nobody come and slap me. I do not, I, I could not withstand a slap, nor a punch, or even a tickle. I'm just no. not a man built for any form of physical <laughs> contact. So please do not hurt me. <laughs> but it's good to have you back, Danny. We thank Adam thank for you. joining us, uh, for coming of on the course. show last week. Of course. Uh, it's always good to have you back. And this week we're talking about um, <gasps> the house of the devil. We're, we're talking about Lucy's house. Oh, Lucy's, Lucy's house. house. Hi. We forgot to say it in the intro there, but Satan's pad. Satan's pad. Uh, Lucifer's cane. cane. Um, what else? The devil's... Devil's... <laughs> Belsy Bob's bungalow. <laughs> devil's dojo. <laughs> the devil's dojo. Um, um, but it's yes, a house, we're... Well, a devil house. It's a devil house movie. Yeah. It kind is. of. Is it? Oh. Is it? Really? Is it? Yeah, this was my first time watching this. Was this Me your too. first time watching it? Yeah. Me too. Yeah. And you happen to have been particularly fond of it from. Uh... I really loved it. Uh, we did briefly speak about yeah. our prior first to thoughts this. prior to this, which sometimes we do, sometimes we don't. Yeah. Um I, I really loved it. Um and it was the first time that I had watched it. And the reason why we chose this film this week is because oh. Ty West's new film X Brandy. is just as we record this, it's been announced that it is coming to VOD this week. So it is in theaters at the minute. I think it's just finishing up in theaters, but it is coming to digital. Uh, and I think there is going to be a physical release of it as well. Mm -hmm. And you can also read the review, which uh, was written by Mr. Adam Neeson. On, put it in the um, we'll put it down in the description yeah, below you know, on our website www.thefrightclubni.com. If you don't want to read the review, then fuck you. But I no, mean, you can watch the movie when it comes out on VOD. Yeah, we might talk about it at some point later we might, on. We might do, um, yeah. But for now, we're going to talk about his debut, House well, of Diablo. Well, it wasn't really his debut. No, no, it was his kinda. third. It was his third feature film. His third, feature but it was his movie. first one that kind of put him on the map. Really, that got mm. you know people noticing. Um, his, his tang. So there you go. Yeah, he did two, two before this. I can't. I want to say one was called The Wrist. And I roost? don't know what the second one was called, but his debut was called The Roost. Was it about a roost of chickens? It was about, <laughs> oh, it was about a nest. Are we, are we a roost of chickens? Uh, <laughs> so what I love about Ty West is that he writes and directs as well, mm -hmm. which is good. And edits. And, and edits, yeah, yeah. And this you get the whole written, thing. directed and edited by yep. Ty West. And this, he had to make it real bold in that yellow font. So we get at the the start. I do. I did enjoy the opening of it. I really enjoyed. I'm gonna be honest, Gav. Didn't like it. It's not that I didn't like it. I appreciate it for what it is. But unless you have the context, um, and like you know, you appreciate a good homage, um, it's it's a lot of nothing until something happens. Okay. Yeah. No, I would agree. It's definitely um, it's definitely a slow burn. It's a real suspenseful, and I mean, if you're in the mood for a good suspense, but I don't know, there was just something yesterday when I was watching it, it just, I wasn't, I wasn't feeling, or not yesterday, the day before when I was watching it, 
I just I wanted something a wee bit more, and it was one of those things where it's just again I, I appreciate that it was the whole kind of build up, and there was a lot of kind of stuff there before to kind of lure us into a sense of some big grandeur. Um, but then it doesn't really happen. There's not there's not the same. There's not that kind of payoff that I wanted, and mm. obviously we'll kind of get into that a bit. Um, I appreciate it, and I thought I enjoyed the bits when stuff did happen but for all the kind of build up the grand payoff wasn't really enough for me yeah i think that i loved the movie part of the reason why i loved it was because it was paying tribute to films that ty west obviously loved when he was growing up um this was set in the early 80s -hmm. but it feels very much like a 70s made film yeah 100 percent. i mean visually and stylistically it is fucking excellent. Um, yeah. But just the overall, the overall kind of narrative payoff. And then to kind of have that last kind of bit sort of popped in at the end that kind of makes you go, oh, maybe there is kind of something supernatural to this. It's a bit too late for that, if you know what I mean. Like I would have like just a wee, a wee sprinkle more before that. Yeah. Just, Fair enough. Uh, just a, Fair wee, enough. a wee sugar in. A wee I, sugar. I, I liked, I liked. I thought there was just enough really in it to keep you going. I know what you're saying. I like that they didn't show any supernatural stuff until the end mm-hmm. um, or anything that might have um, explained, not explained it, but kind of gave us a reason why the fuck these people were doing this or whatever. But yeah, again, man, I can appreciate it. I really enjoyed it. I actually enjoy uh, one of the first things we see is that kind of title card about uh, satanic cults in America. Mm. And I really enjoy that because it's quite, you know, it comes across like it's going to be a genuine statistic. And then it is actually kind of funny. You know, it's kind of like uh, 70% of Americans believe in sat- satanic death cults and the other 30% um, don't believe in them. Uh, they just believe it to be a government conspiracy. And I was kind of like, ah, ha, ha, yeah. I will uh, say that's clearly an homage to Texas Chainsaw Massacre. Yeah. But I kind of think that that gives it away a little bit. You know, if mm. they didn't have that, because you're, you're, con- you're obviously thinking, okay, this is going to be some sort of cult you know and yeah. i don't know if you would immediately go to that conclusion had you not seen that title card so yeah. that was that was one thing where i was kind of like oh I, I i didn't really know what it was about I, you know what i did like i'd seen i'd seen images and stuff and i'd, I'd read a little bit about it but nothing really super in depth so i kind of had a good um idea that it was going towards that but I'm just thinking if that sh- if that had been left out, would the end stuff be more of a payoff? Maybe. You know? M- maybe a bit. Um, but obviously this was quite, you know, it's quite a low budget. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. But there's a good cast, a very good cast in it. Um, the, the lead is uh, jo- Jocelyn Donoghue, who plays Samantha. She's the leading girl in it. Uh, she was in Doctor Sleep. Mm-hmm. Uh, she played the mother, and she also was in one of the Insidiouses. And I think she's done some good genre work over the years, but it also stars uh, Tom Noonan, who mm-hmm. is, you know, class actor. I love about Tom Noonan. He was in Heat, Manhunter, um, Last Action Hero, and The Monster Squad. And he's been in loads of films over the years. He's a fucking amazing actor. And I would just want to shout out, as we're recording this, it is his birthday. It's his happy birthday. birthday. Happy birth. Noonan. Mr. Noonan. Happy birth. No, no, no. So, um, also, also one of our favorites. One, of, one of our faves uh, appears at the very start of the movie uh-huh. as the landlady. Uh-huh. Miss D. Wallace. Wallace, yeah, our favorite. I was kind of thinking that she was going to maybe pop up near the end. I don't know if you thought that. It's like a wee bit. I kind of thought she was maybe going to be somehow involved with this sort of cult, but then. Yeah, again, one of those things where I kind of was like, oh, hopefully she'll come back. Hopefully these kind of other characters that we see come back and make an appearance in this kind of because i get the impression that's supposed to be almost like kind of small town you yeah. know like even the way the pizza delivery guy talks on the phone and whenever she says the address he's like oh cool and it seems like you know everybody kind of knows the area so i was expecting more of this and the whole fact mm-hmm. that the eclipse is i mean if you didn't know there was an eclipse there's at least 100 different ways that they tell you there's an eclipse in this movie between like the flyers at the university the news reports every other character kind of mentioning it um it's kind of like 
oh, there's a, is there a lunar eclipse tonight? Oh, who to thunk it? Um, and that, again, even that there, the fact that that's such a driving point in the movie, that ultimately when it kind of happens, and then it's just like, oh, it happened really quickly. I was like, <laughs> that, again, no real kind of payoff for that. It's such a big build up to this thing that, it, and then it's kind of like, I would have liked to have seen that kind of moment happen and transpire more than it did. Because as it does, it just cuts away to a news report on it in the hospital where they're like, oh, and all the astrologists don't understand why it would pass so quickly. But for everyone else, they're just like, oh, that happened quickly, didn't it? And I was like, okay, all right then. Maybe it was supposed to explain that the cult, the family, didn't really know what they were talking about, you know, because it wasn't any, there was you know, it wasn't an event, really. It, was it wasn't a big, event. yeah, it was a yeah. non-event, but it still led to something. But again, the, the, that as a payoff, I was kind of like, but I mean, if it, if it was a kind of nothing, and I know that, 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 again, I don't like it when they over-explain things in movies, but I feel yeah. like this could have maybe explained just a wee bit more about, okay, well, did it happen quicker because the devil just busted his no. ooey gooey too quickly? <laughs> And that's you know, you, should, you know, is that is that how a paranormal ooey gooey just happened really quick, and that's how she ended up. Uh, spoilers: she's pregnant at the end. He's up the dock. Oh, with whose baby? Um, it's I impl- It's the the devil. But again, it, it's kind of like, oh, really quick uh, lunar eclipse. By the way, she's pregnant, and it's like, okay. the devil's like one of those fish. You know the, or is it? They just sort of walk up to each other and then the walk devil, away. The devil's a fish. <laughs> you know, the, the, de- the devil's a Pisces. He's a little fish. They, they just walk up to each other and like brush each other go, and then hello. impregnate it. And then dust off. it. My job is done. Like we snail firing as we love dart. But the, the budget for this film was under a million. Under a million. That's mental. Mm. No, I know it's, well, it's not a huge cast, there's not a lot of locations. No, uh, but there's some nice, like it's some nice locations, like set pieces and stuff. Um, it's 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 you know most of it's set in the the, the big house, the, mm-hmm. the big house, the, the James Wan house, house. Um, yeah. and there's a few other little locations. I actually love, I love the start. Like it's very much, as I mentioned, very much from the seventies. Yep, feels like a seventies film, and it's it really a, it reminded like, me of The Exorcist a little bit because. Got the extra get, I was yeah. getting Halloween. I was getting kind of like a Halloween yeah. vibe. Mm-hmm. I just like that part because obviously there's there's a part at the start where she's um she's at you know in the halls, the cult like the the cult the student halls, mm-hmm. and you know that sort of suburby type small neighborhood as you mentioned. I, I got that idea. Yeah, Halloween vibes actually as well would have been mm-hmm. really good. The Halloween. That's it's why I picked up one because what is it? She leaves. She's been around the house with D. She leaves D, and as she's kind of going down the street, that's when we kind of get the opening credits. But it freeze frames every time we get a credit. Love it. With that kind of lovely Tarantino esque, like yellowy font. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, just every time one of them flashes up on the screen, it's very much just that kind of like bah, bah, bah at the audience member. And I like, I like that it takes that moment to pause it and then it goes back into the natural flow because that's one of the mm-hmm. things that I do, I appreciate the the pace in this movie i just would have liked that at the end of this there would have been more of it because it, it does it there's the fantastic kind of it just like explodes into the moment when the moment happens but it just feels a bit too late for me fair enough fair enough um so it absolutely bombed at the box office it only made just over 100 grand mm-hmm. which is a real shame but it debuted at Tribeca Film Festival in April of twenty, or sorry, two thousand nine, mm-hmm. and then it got a general release later on that year. Uh, it was one of those films that you know, word of mouth, uh, critics quite liked it, mm-hmm. and you know, peers, Ty West's peers liked it, and it was very much a word of mouth film. But financially, yeah, it did did shite. Tarantino, and like that was the connection that I made instantly whenever I seen the, the opening credits and. Just the fact that he made a film, which was clearly all a tribute, a a homage, tribute, an homage, but it wasn't a cheap homage. You know, it wasn't a, no. a throwback. It was very much a I'm not going to do a throwback here. I'm going to actually make this like it was out of the seventies. And yep. Tarantino does 
a really good job of doing that as well. You know, it's it's got that aesthetic. It's got that kind of retro. Um, you know, it was it was filmed on sixteen millimeter film, so it's it's got that beautiful look to it. It's got the feel, yeah. And it's got the feel, and it's just just the tone and the feel of the actual movie. Even the music for this, very carpenter esque. Some of the music's very kind of. It's almost it's almost kind of like dancey. You know, it's there's, a there's very electronic yeah. dancey to it. Um, which again, I really dug on that. I was like. Okay, sweet. Yep, I enjoy. I'm enjoying the score to it. Um, there is quite a bit I like about it. It's just I think at the end of it, I was just kind of like, <laughs> Meh. you felt it a bit was... deflated. Just yeah, I was just kind of like, no, it's just like something a bit. No, there was one moment which happened <laughs> sort of halfway through that I was like, oh fuck. Uh, yeah. But we'll get to that. I think you know you think. I think yeah, well, you know what I'm talking scene, about. That scene, I've seen pictures of it, and I actually had seen a gif of it quite recently. Yeah. And so I don't know why it shocked me because I was sort of half expecting it. But mm-hmm. whenever the scene actually happened, I was like, fuck. We are talking about the same scene, right? In, in the, the car. The, the car. Yeah, the car. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> that's it. I was like, whoa. Yeah, that was awesome. That was that oh. was incredible. And it, I mean, the effects in it was incredible. Yeah, I mean, it's again, it's just, it's one of those things that because of the quite natural pace into this, and the way that happens, like there's no real build up to it. You don't see that coming. Whereas everything else you kind of expect to see coming doesn't happen. And then when it does happen, it's just kind of like mm, that could have yeah. happened sooner for me. I think I think this was set in like 1982 or 1983. I'm not sure, but we we talked about that. It's it's more of a 70s film. Yeah. When it was released in 2009, this that was just sort of pre nostalgia, if you know what I mean. Like there was a lot of stuff that came after that, that was a throwback or that was kind of. What was uh, going on two thousand nine? I don't know. Using nostalgia, um, but it, w- it would have been the, the the decade after that that really you know, you were seeing loads of films that was set in the seventies and the eighties and even yeah. the nineties. And you it's know, still going now. Like it's yeah, still, yeah. still everyone's still tripping now. on that. Yeah, but mm-hmm. I feel like this movie maybe helped to kind of push that notion. You know, I'm not yeah. saying it was the first one. No, clearly, it wasn't the first one to do it, but no. um, I feel like this maybe kind of pushed that notion into, you know, into the, the zeitgeist, I suppose, of a lot of filmmakers. And they were like, oh, hang on. After seeing this, they made it. The songs, oh, they're on the Yeah, I love here. this. Yeah, I think I'd love to make something similar to this. So, yeah. uh, or maybe I'm just talking shit. And, no, yeah. I, well, I, th- I think you've got, a, you've definitely got a point there. Um, The big thing with this I kind of got was like, is this Rosemary's Babysitter? I guess I kind of, I was kind of like, there's a bit of a Rosemary's baby vibe to this, but instead of, you know, I was kind of like, right, is she going to end up pregnant or is it going to turn out that there is a devil baby? And then yeah. it will kind of like, there isn't actually a baby at all sort of thing. Um, I do like some of the, the wee twists uh, and stuff where it kind of goes, oh, okay, actually, that's not happening. This is happening. And oh, there, this is happening instead of that happening. And, uh, and again, it kind of leaves it to be like, okay, well, there's no paranormal shit here. It's just that people are bad. But then it kind of does deliver on the paranormal shit towards the end, which again, did they really need it? Did they kind of, did they need it? I don't know. Maybe not. But Maybe there should have been a ghoulie in it. Yeah, well, there sort of was. There was a demon. There was, there a... was kind of a demon. Again, very much uh, the demon gave me um, Midsummer vibes. Yeah, it was either it, it was that sort of vibe where, oh, there might be somebody in the family that has some sort of deformed face or mm-hmm. some sort of disease or something wrong with them. Yeah. Um, so we're we're not really entirely sure exactly who that character was. Yeah, but the insinuation is that it's some sort of demon that the devil is kind of living through. Living through, man. Aye, uh, and that's how she impregnates, gets impregnated. But I thought they just did it by drawing the wee pentagram on her tum tum. Aye, but it was the demon that did it, wasn't it? I can remember. Was it the demon or was it the wife? Was it no, his it was wife? De- no, it was the, it was was it the demon. Did the fuck? Now I'm thinking. I'm pretty sure it was. Yeah. So, by the way, the plot of the movie. Plot. We should probably talk uh, about the plot. <laughs> I, like I knew the plot. I. I the synopsis it was a great synopsis because it's kind of vague but it's you know it it doesn't give too much away it's about samantha who's a college student who's just moved into a new house and 
is struggling with money and takes on a babysitter's job that she can't really give up on because she's just like, I need the fucking money. So she goes to the house. She meets the the Ullman family, who's Tom Noonan, uh, and they offer her this babysitting job where she has to stay in the, the house basically all night. But they don't have a kid, which is the first red flag. And first then red flag. he starts questioning it, being like, no, 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 this is I can't do this. And he's like, look, you literally just have to stay in the house. Look after me ma, who um, is a my mother-in-law. Mother-in-law, yes, is apparently like disabled or she can't leave the room basically. Yeah. But medically, she's okay in terms of Samantha doesn't just have to do anything. Bed bound, but not like it doesn't need to be checked on. And he like offers her was he's paying her a hundred bucks first, and then yeah. he goes, "I'll give you two hundred bucks. I'll give you three hundred bucks." And she gives in at three hundred. Then because there's one thing before you no, even she get asks to for that. 400. She ends up getting four hundred. Yeah, asks for four because I think that's her month's rent. The but that's the thing. The thing, right? So even before we get to that, the film actually opens with her going around a property with Dee Walsh's character, the landlady, specifically credited as the landlady. Uh, which again, for me, whenever she she appears in the opening credits as Dee Wallace as the landlady, and I was like, that's a really specific thing to point out. But then also the landlady kind of mentions to her like, oh. Um, the last girl that was here, I just, you know, it, it didn't work right with her. I had a bad gut feeling about her, but you, I've got a good gut feeling about you. And I go with my gut. And you know what? You don't even need to give me a deposit. I'll just take your first your first month down as payment. Um, let me get this sorted with the last tenant and I'll get back to you. I will hopefully get you moved in by the end of the week. And she's like, that, like that to me, there was a lot there. And I was like, right. D. Wallace is somehow going to be involved. The landlady is somehow mm-hmm. involved in this, and she's somehow something's happened with that previous tenant. And there's, you know, that all that kind of stuff. I was like, she's definitely involved. And the fact that that doesn't come back again, it maybe was just a red herring. Mm-hmm. But again, it just, it, it, it's just something else could have been done there, or maybe there was something else there, and it just got cut away or whatever. Um, but it was just there was a lot of. There's a lot of information there for the audience for I, it to lead to nothing. Yeah, I do think there may have been more. I'm not sure. I haven't read into it. Maybe there wasn't. But I also think that that's very indicative of films from the 70s. Mm. Like everybody had a title, you know, whether it was just, you know, old lady at the house or the landlady or something, you know. And that I think that is very much a throwback to the 70s. Yeah, and obviously, little, do how do you little, yeah. the movie? I suppose he was just like, "Fuck, I've got Scream Queen D Wallace." Like, of course, I'm going to credit her in the opening titles. Yeah, of course, yeah. Um, but I feel like that's just like a very small detail that he mm-hmm. took from movies from that decade. Um, so, do you think she was involved though? Or I know it doesn't come back at the end, but I don't, nothing circles back. But just the fact that she kind of talks about she she's really kind of drives from this point of. I have a gut feeling about you, you know, mm. and it's the way she kind of says it's being overly friendly, which again is maybe just me being like, oh, I don't, I don't trust you. Um, but I've I just, watched enough horror films. I've seen enough horror films to know when somebody's fucking around. Fuck around, uh, find out. Yeah, so, no, that's interesting. It's interesting. To, I wonder if, she, if that character had him to do with anything further to, to, yeah. be developed in there because it does kind of feel like whenever it comes to the big kind of final um cult the big final seance like the only people involved are like the husband wife demon ma and random hobo man with gun um you know it, it's kind of like right, i think well, he's their son like he's meant to be their son yeah, yeah. which is kind of implied but then when we found out that the house actually brought to another family who did have a young son you're kind of like okay was well, the son thing a lie then or is he your son again not really clarified mm-hmm. mm-hmm. um one of the things i loved about the film was i just love how it talked about how it looked i loved mm-hmm. how it was filmed in terms of the, the movement of the camera. Yeah. So I love one of my favorite shots ever is I just love a slow zoom. Oh, uh, very basic, but um, again, very indicative of the 70s. You know, the whole sort of slowing, uh, moving slowly into an object or person. And I love that they do, that Ty West does that quite a bit in this. 
Yeah. I think it's just so creepy and eerie, and it, it does a lot for a scene. Um, but it is very simple. But oh yeah. Whenever it's done correctly, it, it's really effective. It's excellent. I love the, just those kind of close-ups on an object as like a character walks in from being out of focus. Like there's that point mm-hmm. where she's returning to the dorm room oh, um, yeah. and sees the sock on the handle. Yes. And then that focus of the the sock on the handle and her walking to the door. And again, why why does this always happen in films where like whenever the person like knocks on their dorm room door, it's just like, oh Sarah, let me in. And for some reason they the person, the the their roommate seems to always moon louder in that moment. It's kind of like it's not just have the same it's, consistent. Yeah, I think it's a way of them saying I'm fucking in here. Can you I'm, get out, please? Excuse me. I'm in the middle of a raid. If you can um, hear me, I like Sam- Samantha's like, uh, oh, come on. It's the morning. It's like, does it doesn't really matter what time of the day it is for, <laughs> for a buck. Do people Seriously. not raid in the morning? When you're waking up, you know? Uh, or maybe thing. she's still riding during the night. You never straight, know. Straight on through. Mm-hmm. I gone through to the other side. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely doors reference there, Danny. Love it. Yeah. Uh, so, yes. Yeah, so... She takes the job eventually. She goes to the house. She takes the job. Um, Friend or her roommate leaves. The whole thing again. Oh. Uh, the the kind of you know he, he she calls a number from like the university payphone, and then he calls her straight back. And the creepy like dulcet tone over the phone. And then she goes to meet him at like the university like admin building, and he doesn't mm-hmm. show. And there's that whole kind of. Uh, build up of tension there like oh what's going on like why is she kind of being fucked around here is anything going to happen and then a roommate's like oh I was uh, someone called for you and I, I wrote the number down it's on your desk but even before we get to that bit there was a very kind of like on the nose moment whenever she's in the she's in like one of the kind of American diners with her friend and they're kind of talking about the job and the fact that the fella didn't meet her and stuff. Mm. And then she's like, oh, what if the kid turned out to be a demon or something or a demon child? And I was like, mm. that's a bit, that's a bit so, on the nose. Oh. A bit on the nose. <laughs> Don't we think? Again, that feels like it's a... Like, oh, yeah, it's you? true. Yeah, to, it's, a, you know, it's, a, it's an homage to a man. No, no. A little um, omen homage. The omen and, you know, and there's a, there's a lot of like, even... Like the the Amityville horror mm-hmm. has that big house that's you know haunted and you know it's got that sort of vibe too as well. I, I just fucking loved it, man. Yeah, I, I do, it. I do, I, I really do. I really enjoyed all the weekend homages and tributes, and I did enjoy the on the news comment um, because again, I'm kind of like oh because I like horror and stuff, but ultimately the, the narrative payoff for me. There's a moment where when they first arrive at the house, they both go in together. It's like, oh, this is my friend, but she'll she'll be yeah. going. She's just dropping me off. Um, but they kind of like look at how like tall they're both almost like oh, when no. they see like how tall he is. But she kind of does like a wee like you know, like a wee. Mm. Um, he's a good looking man, Mister Tom Noonan. He's, he's a big Tom Noonan, and his, I love his cane. I, know. I think his his cane's one of my favorite like costume pieces in it with that wee kind of dragon head on the handle um, I was like that's nice her mate who's I think is called Megan Megan uh, is played do you know who she's who that is no that's Greta Gertwig who directed um, Lady Bird and oh that woman and yeah oh okay I did not even so she, on to that. she was obviously she was you know, she was an actress like before but she still is an actress yeah, yeah. Um, but I didn't realise she was in this until obviously I seen the opening titles and was like, oh, right, great. She's yeah. great. She's a fantastic mm-hmm. actress and she's a fantastic filmmaker as well. She's great. And she, yeah, again, uh, Lady Bird's fucking fantastic. Yeah. And uh, Little Woman was pretty good too. But in this, yeah, I think she she's probably one of my favourite performers in this just because of her whole kind of like attitude and stuff and the mm-hmm. way she kind of comes across. And then even in that moment, she's kind of the comic relief, but also the kind of like, lousy person because of her whole her whole kind of attitudes a wee bit stinking mm. but she's also like whenever she's, she's not a bit, she's a bit of a free spirit you could say yeah like she's quite selfish she's a bit self, self-centered self but whenever she kind of twigs on that she's being self-centered she'll try and be good mm-hmm. um but man ugh, that moment where the fella appears well she, she, she 
just just before that. Even before that, sorry. I'm just really excited to talk about that she, bit because she, it's so... Yeah, she goes to the house, but then she sort of leaves angrily because she's like, what are you doing? Yeah, you, can't, you definitely you can't shouldn't babysit do this. whenever they don't have a kid. Obviously, there's something weird going on. Mm-hmm. So you should always, that's a lesson, you should always listen to your friend. She's yeah. an intel- intelligent girl. like. Um, so she, and anyway, she, she decides or to go for it. Is she just jelly because Sam's going to get 400 to nip and she's not nah, getting 400 nip? I didn't get that from it. I thought she was genuine. And also she says that she'll come back later to pick her up. So well, that's true. She's not that's that selfish. Come, she is going to come back for Or uh, is she? Or is she? If she goes back to... <laughs> she, she might go back and your man might be waiting for her and then she might not even open the door. She might, yep. Yeah, but her, her mate, sure, her mate can't even come back anyway because guess what happens? <gasps> she gets her fucking face blown off. She gets her face shot off by random hobo with a lighter number one um ma what a moment what a fucking that that's great whenever she she turns in to get the car turned because she's gone the wrong way and she's like what's this she says earlier because you can't almost forget like they didn't have sat navs and shit no. and she's like i even had to look at a map to find out where, how to get to this place she says that on the way to the house so whenever she gets lost then later we could be like oh it's because she didn't know where she was going um but the when she goes to get turned and then she kind of stops the car and she goes to light it but the car lighter isn't working so this dude just appears at her window and is like oh i was going to give you a light and she's like where'd you come from and they're having a bit of a chat and then he's like are you not the babysitter? And even before she can get the sentence out, before she even just gets finished to say, no, it's my friend, he fucking shoots her face off. <laughs> what the fuck? It's such it's so a good. Fucking, it just happens like... It's fuck, so good. Just... Poof, and the blood all against the windscreen. And it just... Oh, fuck. And whenever he, like, he leans into the car and takes the cigarette off her, like... I know. Mush face. <laughs> and he just fucking starts smoking it. And you're like, fucking hell. Do you think? Oh. Do you, I'm just thinking about this now. There's a little nod that she says in the diner about the pizza. And I was like, fuck, her face is just like a slice of pepperoni right now. Oh, it's, it's just pure, pure ground it's meat. Bread. Yeah, it's fucking yeah. rotten. I wonder just, if that was a wee nod to that. Like Maybe, maybe. But it's the fucking, whenever he just leans over and grabs the fag and he sort of I know. flicks it and then just start smoking it and you're like fucking hell what a moment that was yeah that but i was kind of like whoa that's kind of the first time that anything happens really and you're yeah. just like what the fuck that is, I, I loved it because i think it's more effective because it was so slow and mm-hmm. it was quite you know it's quite a slow build up and then that just comes out of nowhere and it really really takes you really out takes of you it. nowhere yeah it's, um, it doesn't take you out of it it takes you out of it in a good way is what I meant you know yeah but again it's one of those things like that happened and I was like okay here we fucking go and then I actually just it's like if it was a roller coaster it'd be like you know it, yeah it, peaks and troughs yeah but this movie just sort of is like trough 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 peak trough 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 peak trough mm-hmm. you know there's kind of like two really big moments in it I, and the, I really liked after that, I was like, I was the same as you. I was kind of like, fuck, who's this guy? What's going to happen? And then we get a little bit of kind of like Michael Myers-y thing happening where he goes to the house. She Samantha orders pizza. So we get a whole sequence where Samantha's in the house on her own. And it's she puts on her She puts on her headphones, her headphones and has a bag of jabber in the house and then breaks a vase. But so I love that because that clumsy. was very 80s, wasn't it? That part yeah. where... Dun, 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 dun. dancing around uh, and it's cutting to her dancing around different bits of the house yeah i really like that and i love the song is called a cassette player and all. Uh, one thing leads to another mm-hmm. which you know is mm-hmm. a nice little song title for this film but also i love the fact that before she puts her headphones on there's quite a long sequence of basically her just walking around the house and it's basically silent yeah and i just love that because I, think I love that, I love her nosing around all the rooms because I'm like I'd fucking do that too. Yeah, that's exactly what you do in like a big empty house. I didn't, like I remember going to dog sit for like an old couple who lived in like this fucking manor house right in the arse end of nowhere, and like you walked around naked, didn't you, Danny? No, I didn't walk <laughs> around naked. 
It's in my jammies. But I still walked around and just sort of like admired the place. Then go hooking. Like the one thing she does do is go hooking through his desk. And I don't agree with that. You don't just no. go around hooking in people's desks. But you do walk in and have a look around the rooms. Maybe have a look at the books. But you don't hook in their desks. That's oh, just that's rude. Nice. Just downright rude. No. You don't know what could have been in there. I love the silence because it's kind of, it's a really good build up attention because you just you're waiting for something big to happen and then you get that moment where she orders the pizza the <laughs> pizza guy comes but it's actually the guy the hobo guy the son victor i think his name is um, but it's really cool because she opens the door and just grabs the pizza and fucking closes the door straight away so he doesn't get a chance to interact with her but then yep. he does the old wee ooh, looking through the mirror or looking through the window yeah and um so again that's a very slow build up there i like that i really like that moment yeah, um, I, I love whenever she goes into the sun's room and that wallpaper of like the cowboys and Indians. I was like, fuck, this is. I just, I love, I don't know, I just really like that imagery. And I love how big the rooms seem because they kind of always seem to be framed that she's like in the corner of the shot. And then there's that whole kind of, there's a kind of forced perspective of the room, which I really, really like. I think it's really cool. And whenever she sits down at the desk, she's just this little figure in the middle of that big desk and stuff. I, th- I really like the way everything's sort of framed. Yeah. There. It's really well shot. It's a beautiful film as well. Yeah. And I feel like he's he's thought about all that as well. It's not just like, oh, we need to just get this shot in quickly. I yeah. feel like he has probably thought about how it looks and the framing, as you said. Um, so she starts to hear some noises coming from upstairs. Ooh, who Mommy? Who could it be? Is it Mama? <laughs> Mama, is that you? Mama. Um, so she goes to investigate and this is she's sort of creaking now and it is weird because it's supposed to be a mother-in-law figure who's you know bed bound and stuff but she doesn't she doesn't go there until this moment mm-hmm. which I suppose she's sleeping she's an old lady why would she go in there but she goes up and she kind of she gets that moment where she she opens a door and there's isn't there clothes hanging up in the door? And she she says that thing where, oh, I thought she said that these were in the basement. Yep. Which is yep. also, you know, your another red flag because you're thinking, oh, mm. why is she? Why is a woman lying to her about this? Yep. Um, and she sort of creeps around so, the house a little bit. The woman in general is a big red flag. Whenever the wife comes down to see her first before her and big boy head head out, her and the tall man head on out. Um, she's pure asking her. She's like, oh, I bet you the boys really like you. Your mother must be yeah. so worried all the time and stuff. And it's just Is like... she not kind of rub her face or something? Oh, uh, she's kind of strokes her hair. And it's just like, you're a bit much, missus. Could you back off? Jeez. But there is a moment where she goes she goes upstairs and she's about to go into a room. And then you, you see a shot from inside the room. And it's the, basically the giant pentagram um, with the, the dead body yeah. of the family. It's, man, whenever you don't see find... it for very long, but it's you know it kind of comes out of nowhere as well, doesn't it? It's again one of those kind of like shock moments, but again, it's that kind of fleeting. They're almost like what? Because it actually lingers longer on whenever she finds the family photo, and she's looking at it, and then she mm-hmm. kind of looks out and sees the RV sitting like out the back, mm-hmm. like that. For me, I was like, okay, there's more to this. But then whenever you see the body in the pentagram later, you're like, okay, well, yeah, they killed them then. It's not yeah. really, it kind of eliminates that idea of like a mystery. Yeah, That's, it like, I, I feel like I wish they didn't show that because, mm-hmm. again, the end would have been maybe more of a, a payoff. If they had handed it to something, mm-hmm. but not actually shown anything um, kind of as obvious as that. No, exactly. It's just, you know, rather than having a body with a pentagram, ooh, um, I don't know, just like bloody clothing or just something, mm. something like soiled garments. Oh, yeah. I know. So, um, yeah, so basically she, she, she's essentially, she's trying to phone her mate because she's like, where, you know, where have you been home yet? Trying to talk to her. Obviously she's on her own. She's, she starts to get a little bit worried because she's hearing noises, she can't get through to her mate. She's had her pizza, and she's actually thrown the pizza in the bin. Yeah. Um. Again, we're getting a lot of kind of slow build up of tension. Something's going to happen here, and then it's actually 
excruciatingly slow, some of it. I love it. I really like that type of filmmaking. Um, and if it's done well, I think it is very, very effective. I think it is done well here. Mm-hmm. And as I said, I love a lot of the shots, a lot of the Zoom shots um, and the sort of panning across the rooms and stuff. I really, really love that because it kind of highlights the emptiness of the house as well. Mm. And how, as you mentioned, how big the house is, how yeah. small she is compared. I love to the, the there's that whenever she walks into the kind of almost like white room and it's the one with the big long window. And then you get the shot from outside the house mm. with that big long window. And then when the lights cut off and it all goes black, I'm like, oh, yeah. that I fucking... I live for that. Um, <laughs> I love that shit. I fucking love it. Um, yeah, it is. It's, it's just, but as you say, like, I wouldn't have minded the pacing of this if there had just been a greater payoff at the end. I enjoy, I think the pacing is good. I just, I just wanted more. I just wanted a little bit more. Just a little something. We get to the point where it's the lunar eclipse and we've seen the news reports about it. I love that shit as well. Man, the, the, it's the it's all the like amongst all the like lunar eclipse party flyers on the the university billboard. It's just this one for like babysitter required. Please call, and it's just about every single other one is about this lunar eclipse. Yeah, There's no. the new the is. about the lunar eclipse. Everybody's talking about the lunar eclipse. Did you know there's a lunar eclipse? I didn't know that, you know, until just, Did you not realise there was that? a lunar eclipse? Nah. Of course, I didn't. I you was know, aware of that. <laughs> I didn't seem to be one of the main points of the movie. I didn't. They should have called it lunar eclipse. They should have just called it lunar eclipse. I know the lunar eclipse that was. Yep. Um, <laughs> That's my so next hit. <laughs> so anyway, uh, she is hear noises. She's all on her own. She can't ring her mate. She's at pizza. She's walking about. <laughs> blah blah blah. Lunar eclipse, and then that's when shit starts to go downhill uh, mm-hmm. for her but uphill for us because it's like great brilliant and yeah. uh, we get lovely cool. shots of like the the moon like the flickering of the blood red moon almost mm-hmm. and it flickers and we get lovely sh- flickering shots ah oh, it looks gorgeous um and then obviously that's when we know that you know <laughs> the event is happening it's going down so i know um and then she gets she gets captured mm-hmm. and tied up to the pentagram it's whenever she comes to because it just cuts to black and then whenever it cuts back to her she's like lying on the ground and like just a top on her undies and she's just like and all the candles around her and big pentagram on the ground and they're all kind of around her and their cloaks and she's getting blood drawn on her and then that big fucking cattle skull with all the blood in it oh. so they come out of the sort of shadows with their hoods on and um, it's Tom Noonan Tom Noonan and, and the wee lad and then the wee demon lad well he's not really and, uh, a wee lad he's a fully grown hobo man well never <laughs> uh, and then I the skull so demon draws the pentagram on her tummy oh, tum, tum. Um, and then we finger painting I know she drinks the blood they pour it into her mouth skull that's yeah, they, they're just like, blah, 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 blah. the water border, yeah, basically. Basically, the, yeah. The blood border? Yeah. Blood, blood, um, blood. And then, obviously, that's... When, well, we, we assume that she's being impregnated. And mm. somehow she's that's been... The, the moment. She's being uh, breeded, somehow. So, and then, eventually, she does escape. Mm-hmm. And she... I love that scene where your, your wee man, the wee hobo guy, just chasing her. And she just gets a fucking knife. Now, to be fair, she must have a wide long arm because she was lying on her back and she was able to slit his throat and he was standing. Yes, he was leaning over a little bit, but uh, she slits his throat and then he fucking dies. And the mad comes up and is all like, oh, fuck. Yep. He's mad because she's fucking mental enemy. Uh, Pretty scary anyway. She, so she she's chases her story. to one of the rooms. Mm-hmm. Um, what happens with Ma? Does she not get the chop as well? She, she, she you know, she gets stabbed. That's it. She gets so they go to the attic, mm-hmm. and then she like turns all old and stuff. 
she gets she gets creepy. It gets weird. That's she gets she... all like old and her hair turns grey, but she's looking out the window. She's got a wig. She's got the fucking. Is it not a wig? That's it. It's a wig, you're right. Mm-hmm. And then, um, some oh, she's praying. She's like stabs praying her in the back. To, to your lord and saying, "Oh Lord, you'll." You'll grant us this. We give you everything, mm-hmm. and and then yeah, and then Samantha's just like fuck you, bitch, and fucking yeah. gets her. And then Samantha ends up running out of the house, and she starts escapes essentially. Yeah, um, into a graveyard. <laughs> I actually loved Jocelyn Donahue who plays Samantha. Mm-hmm. I thought she was great in it. She is um, great. Really reminiscent of. Um, Brooke Adams from Invasion of the Body Snatchers and Jessica Harper from uh, Suspiria as well. Especially mm. in that end scene where she's covered in blood. Like, I, I, that's a great image, isn't it? When she's yeah. covered in the blood. So or she basically her with... nightdress. Or... It's whenever Noonan kind of comes up, up to her in the graveyard. He's been stabbed. He's got the knife sticking out of him and she's got Hobo Guy's gun. And he's just like pleading to her, like, listen, you need to, we're, we're doing this for the greater good, the greater good. Of course. And he's like, you know, you can kill me now. I'm, I'm just the messenger here to deliver our Lord's, uh, to, to deliver, to do the deeds for our Lord. Like, kill me if you want. And she just fucking does it. Like, she's just, she's just like, hi, right, bam. Um, but him, him in that moment, I really liked him in that moment. He gets down, you know, he becomes this, where before he's always been this kind of like overbearing figure because of his height. And then all of a sudden he's like down on his knees. Um, mm-hmm. And he is, he's not like, that's the thing the whole way through it. Like because of how tall he is and he, he seems like an imposing figure, but he never, he never actually does anything that is overly aggressive. Like even whenever he's trying to convince her to stay, he kind of does go like that at her. And then he stops and goes, oh, I'm, I'm so sorry about that, Samantha. You know, I just, I just really need someone to look after uh, her mother. You know, he, he he's not, an aggressive character by any means, mm. but just mm. because again of his stature, um, he seems so much more important. He's very soft spoken. Yep, he's incredibly softly spoken. And but well, that moment, whenever he's kind of like down groveling to her, like, listen, like we need you, you're you're the vessel. Mm. Basically, it's just like that. Yeah, I really like that. And again, I, I know it kind of was like, ooh, graveyard, but I really I enjoy the setting. I thought that was a, a nice sort of no, no, it was class spooky place to yeah, have a class. thing, you know. So she kills him, and then up just before this, she's she's getting like mad visions as well. She her she's skin is starting, to, yeah, her skin's starting to turn kind of pale. She suspects that she does have some sort of infection of some kind, um, and then she ends up just killing herself. Well, shooting herself in the head. Yeah, she doesn't actually kill herself because she doesn't die, and then you get. It basically cuts to the hospital where she's lying in the bed with the head pure bandaged up bandaged up and the wee nurse comes in she's like oh you'll be all right you'll be fine both of you will be and she sort of rubs rubs her tummy or sort of puts her hand on her tummy um who was she talking about there danny by the way was, she, was there another somebody else there in the bed with her walk up going up no i did think because there's kind of that moment after that the the and credits kind of roll up over and we see her lying for a very long time and I was like are they going to fucking somebody sit under that bed with like a big hose and they're going to blow into a balloon you're just going to see the tummy like get bigger and bigger as the credits roll over mm. that didn't happen um, but there but was kind of a part of me that was like yeah because it was a freeze frame it freeze framed over that last image but it would have been funny if it, the camera had panned over it and there was another bed there and it was your man and he'd survive. He'd survive too, and he. The nurse was saying, "Oh, you're both. You'll both survive." But it was actually. What if it had been? Man. What if it had been the demon person, and it just turned out to be like an ordinary person, as you say, who who has sort of disfigurements? Like, what if that had been the case? I think I would have dug that. I would have been like, okay, so yeah, it's just that people are fucking bad. Yeah. You know, if it, if it had been something like that there, but. Yeah, it's just it's one of those things. I'm kind of like, okay, I get it, and I was like, does this mean sequel? Um, but it just, I don't know. And uh, by the end of it, I was like, okay, I get it. I was like, that was a nice homage piece. Yeah, but but yeah, it was very Rosemary's Baby. Um, Rosemary's Baby. Human, 
Rosemary's Babysitter, that's a good one, yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, the Omen, a little bit exorcist a little bit, bit little amateur horror, yeah. Kind of a bit, that I think, I don't know why, but that bit where she walks into the big room that you see lit from outside, that was a bit shining-y to me. There was something I don't know. Oh, no, 100% it was very shiny. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, I think it's even some of the carpets in the house. Well, uh, is it's there... the it's the, the color, I suppose, of the you know the grading of the film as well. Mm, yeah. And it has that kind of look to it. And actually yeah. talking about the shining, Ty West has another film called Innkeepers, which was the only film I had seen before I watched this of his. Yeah. And I rewatched it after watching this. And um I actually hadn't seen the end of the innkeepers the first time I watched it. But it's basically saying a, a whole a hotel is closing down. It's like the last couple of days of the hotel, and uh, it's kind of a bit ghost hunting and stuff. But it's very much The Shining inspired. There's a lot of shots in that that kind of hark back to some of the shots from The Shining, mm-hmm. uh, like not or not too on the nose, but you know you can tell. And I like that he did that with that as well. Although it's yeah. not as much of a tribute as this yeah. is to films from that era. But yeah, I love the freeze frame over the the credits, um, and I love that it brought up the credits, you know, with the name, the dot 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 dot, and then the actor that played the character, because that's you know again a, a throwback. Yep. Um, we spoke briefly about the music. Mm-hmm. Uh, the score was done by Jeff Grace, who has worked with Ty West before. I loved the music, and I thought it was fantastic. And I love, I especially love the end credits score. Because it's like a piano, a really slow piano piece, yep. and it feels like um, it feels like it shouldn't be there, mm-hmm. but it is very, very much. Again, I'm going to say it, it's very indicative of seventies horror films, because they would tend to have those kind of pieces in them, because it doesn't sound like it should be there. Yep. It's not just like the drones and the weird sounds, you know. It's like kind of a really nice piece of music. Yeah, I kind of almost kind of takes you out of being spooked and it's just like it's okay though because here's a nice piece of music to lull you back into your safe little world yeah or but, is um, it but yeah Ty West I think he's an auteur I think he's very much a Tarantino for the horror genre I know he's yeah. done non-horror films as well but I'm really looking forward to seeing X I haven't seen it yet so I'm really looking forward to seeing it yeah. Um, but yeah big fan of House of the Devil you were a bit meh I liked I I do I, I appreciate it for what it is. I just I would have just liked a wee bit more of a narrative payoff. Definitely worth a watch. You can go check it out on Amazon uh, Prime. It's on yeah, it's 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 on Prime. It was on Prime, wasn't it? It's on Prime. Um, yep. Yep. and let us know in the comments what you think of the film anyway. Mm-hmm. Uh, let us know what you think of X. Everyone seems to be loving X right now, so really looking forward to seeing that. X X, X go Four. give it to you. Extreme. Suck it. Uh, ooh, ooh, some fans will get that anyway. Um, what, <laughs> yeah, go and watch X. Let us know what you think. Watch House of the Devil. Let us know what you think of that. Check out our um, article linked below. Yeah, go read the review. Follow us on Twitter and Instagram at the Fright Club NI. Go visit the website at www.thefrightclubni.com. Danny, have you got anything else? You gotta remember to like, comment, and subscribe. And hit that bell icon for ding, all ding. updates. All the updates. <laughs> we really appreciate everyone that has been uh, watching the videos recently and sharing them. And uh, we're up to three hundred and five subscribers. We are, yeah. Woo-hoo. So tell your horror pals about us. But I think that's all we've got time for this week, Danny. I think so. Is there anything you want to say about Jada Pinkett Smith or before we go? Nope. Or... Nope. No, you sure? Nope. Good. Never happened. Right. Wasn't me. <laughs> Two weeks time. Two and weeks. Always. This... Stay safe. Take care. Bye. Bye.